Hello, it's me again. Another Digital Ventures Let's Build. We are creating Minecraft in Scratch. We're going to be creating code for moving our character around. We're going to create uh, code for placing blocks down. And we're going to be creating code for removing those blocks. So what I have first to show you is uh, I have Steve. He's just basic sprite. Now I also have a block sprite that has costumes which are different blocks in Minecraft. Believe it or not, air is actually a block in Minecraft and here I have it as this big white square and that's going to be helpful later on when we need to remove blocks. Okay, let's get coding. Now I don't want to place a block unless my mouse pointer is close enough to our character because in Minecraft you can't place a block that's like three or four blocks away. So we're going to start with that, um, and I'm going to get rid of these variables and we're going to remake them. So first variable I'm going to make is called placeable, which is going to be for all sprites and it's going to be letting us know if we're allowed to place a block. And we will only be allowed to place one if our mouse pointer, or the distance to the mouse pointer, so I'm going to say forever if, because this rule is always going to be happening, forever if the distance of to the mouse pointer, distance to mouse pointer is less than, let's do 100 pixels, then we're going to set placeable to 1, and otherwise, or else, we will set it to 0. Now that is unfortunate because I should have used an if else block so I'm going to swap these in here if it lets me get rid of the if and set placeable to zero so I switch that up a little bit if the mouse pointer is close enough we are going to say placeable is equal to one otherwise it's zero you can't place it that's the rule those are the rules here Steve Okay, we're not going to get Steve moving around until we get all of our blocks, uh, block code finished. So I'm going to jump into the block. Uh, every time we have a code block we need, one green flag clicked. And if we are holding a block or like controlling where it should go, we are going to give it a ghost effect so it doesn't look like all the other blocks that are placed down. And that'll help with all of our collisions as well. So chain, oops, set ghost effect to, I'm going to go to, I'm going to go with uh, 25 for now. So that's, that's what I'm going to start with. And then I'm going to make this just start on Steve. That makes sense. Steve will be able to hold it. Sure. And then we need a forever loop. And we're going to check if our placeable is equal to one. So if we're allowed to place, if our mouse pointer is close enough, then if our mouse pointer is close enough to Steve, placeable will be one. And then what we're going to do is put this block onto a grid. A square on a, an imaginary grid that we're going to make. For that to work, we need two co um, variables an x position and a y position, ypos and xpos for the block. And here comes a little bit of math. So we're going to take this big screen, and it's minus 240 to 240 pixels, and we are going to round that number to like the nearest uh, 30 by 30 block. Um, it's a little bit of math here, but it's actually very useful if you wanted to do a game where you like snap to a grid. And we need to set both the X and the Y here. And we're going to set it to the mouse pointer, but then adjust it a little bit to round to the nearest 30 by 30 block. 
So we're going to need a multiplier, and then we're going to need to find the ceiling of. So we do ceiling of blank. So we're going to take 30, you multiply that by the ceiling of, I'm missing one block. Yep, the ceiling of our mouse x position, this is for the x position, divided by 30. So what is happening here is we're taking wherever the mouse is, dividing it by 30, which should give us like a decimal point number or a fraction. And then we round that up. Let me see if I can explain this with my painting tool. So if we have 100, if our mouse pointer is at something like 132, what we're going to do is divide that by 30. And that's going to equal something like, uh, I don't know, 4.4 .4 or something like that. And that number, the 4.4, .4, we take that and we round it up by using that ceiling operator. So that'll equal 5. And then we multiply it again by this 30 here, which will equal to, so 5 times 5 <laughs> equals, oh, I'm sorry, 5 times 30 equals 150, which is now a multiple of 30. So we take a, a strange number, or a, a number that's in between those 30 by 30 blocks, and then we converted it like that. So let me delete that. Okay, so that's what that does. And you'll see, um, I'm gonna do the same thing for Y, obviously. But you switch out to Y position. And these variables aren't being used yet, but that's okay. We're gonna use a go to X, Y to actually apply these numbers to the position of our block from X position and Y position. And we should see, as you can see now, it is snapping to a 30 by 30 grid based on my mouse pointer. And if I go too far away, you can't control it because that is not a place you're allowed to place a block. It is not placeable. Perfect. That's perfect. Excellent. Let's move on. Next step is actually clicking down and putting these blocks into the game. Of course, we need to use the pen tool. I always got to use the pen tool. It's very useful and handy in these games. Um, when green flag clicked, so next we're going to be doing the uh, clicking to place a block. That means we're doing a forever if, and then we're doing a mouse down block. And if ever I want to like do a click and I want to make sure someone has to release before clicking again, we need to use a uh, wait until not mouse down. So this is the start of the click and then once you release, you're allowed to click again. When you click, we're going to set that ghost number to zero. So it's a fully visible block and it'll, it'll have a full color. Then we are going to stamp this block, and then we're going to set its ghost back to 25. And let's check it out. So this should do something here. There we go. So I'm placing these blocks down now, and it's a 30 by 30 grid. If you see that there's a gap between the blocks, you may need to change your size of the block. Right now my size I set to 125 because that was what worked out. But you might want to change it to a higher or lower number so that these fit nicely. And the really only way to do that is to uh, write the code and then test it out. Okay. Great. Now what I want to do is change the block when I press space. So that's like my inventory. Um, it's going to be similar to this, so I'm duplicating it, and I'm just going to drag. Well, I wanted one of those blocks, but that's okay. We're going to drag it out and use a key space press this time. And I dragged out that wait until that I want again. Wait until not 
wait until not keep space pressed. And every time I click it, it's really simple. I'm just changing the costume. So I, you can see I've got brown uh, dirt. And I also have my white block, which I'm going to be using to erase things. It may leave these little artifacts behind, but that's OK. They will not affect my game very much. And you can always click over them a couple times and it gets rid of them. OK. Great. Now let's get um, let's get a floor created. So what I can do to create a floor is I can use some code to just stamp a line underneath my player before the game starts. And that I can do that um, above here before I'm allowed to place anything. Okay. So if I'm going to be placing these blocks, I need to set my ghost effect to, so this is the original block that I was on, uh, zero. And then I'm going to erase the game because <laughs> there might be some blocks left over. I'm going to go to a position. Nope. Go to, since I'm doing 30 by 30, minus 210 and one, minus 150 are both multiples of 30. So they will place themselves inside of a nice uh, square. Switch costume to, let's do uh, dirt, why not? And then we're going to stamp it and then move over. Let's do that um, maybe 15 times. I think that should be enough. So if I stamp it, stamps the block, and then we move. You could do change X as well. <laughs> not 10. That, see, that's not good. We've got to do 30. All right, we need one more, I think. So 16 is enough. Great. So now every time I press the green flag, it generates the floor. And you can change it to grass if you'd like here. It's not really up to you. If you do air, it's not going to do anything. <laughs> it's not going to be helpful. So grass is the way to go. OK, let's get Steve jumping around this map. Every block has a black outline except for the air one. So we can't pass through these, but we can pass through that one based on the code that I'm going to be making. OK, move that out of the way. So Steve, he's going to have some pretty realistic jumping. So we're going to need a Y speed for him. It could be for all sprites or for just him. Doesn't matter. When green flag clicked, set the Y speed to zero, which is fine. And we're going to place him in the middle of the screen, uh, minus 50. So he'll just start there. Well, that's a little bit high. Minus 100. Good. He'll fall down onto the ground. Forever. Um, now let's do a little collision. If, um, let's do an if else. You're either touching a black block or you're not. If touching color, and then I can pick one out here. Black. I'm going to set my Y speed to zero. However, if I'm pressing the W key when I'm touching the black color, I will jump. So W will be my jumping. W arrow is pressed. We will set the Y speed to a number in which we'll move him up. 10 is good. A higher number will make you jump higher. Lower number is lower jumps, obviously. Now, if I touch this, I'm allowed to jump, right? I set my Y speed to zero, and then I'm allowed to jump, so I don't go through it. Otherwise, if I'm not touching this, I need to change my Y speed by minus one to make us fall down. So if I'm not touching a black uh, outline on the block, I move downward, running out of space. OK. Next, we're not even we're not really going to be moving yet. You're just going to see this number fly downwards. 
So what we need is to actually apply the y speed number to our character's y position. Change y by y speed. There you go. Now we've got it. Okay, back to the coding. We need left and right movement. If key pressed of some kind, key, 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 let's do, um, let's do the D key for going right. Uh, very simple. We're not going to use physic, too much physics here for this. Uh, change it by 10. However, if we happen to hit a wall by running into it, we want to stop. So I'm going to use the colors here of my character's arms to prevent me from running through a wall. So if color touching color, the first one needs to be my character's arm color, wherever that might be. Yep, it's not going to let me. <laughs> Pause it. Let's try and grab that. And then if it's touching uh, black, make sure that goes all the way down. Oops. Okay. So if my arm is touching black, then I will reverse course. I will not move change X by 10. So I will reverse it and I'll do the same code, but for a a to go left and we're going to swap these swap them around. I could have just typed that in, but whatever. Um, okay. There we go. My guy's moving around. I am placing blocks and jumping on them. So this is working exactly right. Let me switch to another block. All right, so let's say I built my house and I need to get through my door, but I can't. I can use the space key, grab the air block, close that up, and we got ourselves a little house. <laughs> let's fix these. All right, oh no, I'm stuck. Well, I guess that works, okay. All right, let's take a closer look. I'm going to build a noob tower, as what they used to call these. I don't know if they still call it a noob tower. <laughs> there you go. That's the start of creating uh, Minecraft and Scratch. I hope you learned a little bit here. Um, thanks for watching. You can like and subscribe. We have tons more videos coming to help you learn some Scratch, learn how to code. Um, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.